welcome to Health Exchange. Today we're going to focus another episode on our carbon footprint and the importance of recycling. And with us today is Hanson Selectman, Matt Dyer. Welcome to the show, Matt. Hey, thanks so much for having me. So you want to bring to the town meeting in October um, the possibility of voting on a plastic bag ban. Um, can you elaborate for us what that would mean to the residents in Hanson? Sure, absolutely. Um, so for those at home that don't uh, haven't heard about this plastic bag ban or polystyrene ban, it's just um, a simple way for us to start reducing our waste uh, for future generations, for your kids and your grandkids and my grandkids' grandkids to be able to live on a habitable planet because right now with our growing population we have uh, we have more and more people coming onto the planet and more and more waste being produced and this is a great way for us to cut down on our waste to have an impactful um, an impactful solution and that's not going to really have too much of an impact on us but a bigger impact for our future generations so when I was growing up we didn't have plastic bags. We had brown paper bags and they switched to plastic. Before that, when I was really small, stores didn't even offer bags. You brought your own, you did things. You even had your choice of glass containers to refill milk um, and other things. The didn't have cereal boxes the way we do now and other such things. It almost seems that we've become a society of convenience. Would you have any recommendations for the state or, for, or ideas for the industry to help solve the waste problem? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, part of it is, as you said, we're becoming a society of convenience. One time use, use it and lose it. Don't worry about it. And with that mentality, we just consume and consume and consume and we're running out of space in our landfills. And if we're not re using reusable packaging materials, such as styrofoam, styrofoam will go to the landfills and sit there for hundreds of years. And we haven't seen how long it's gonna take for them to decompose yet because it hasn't been really around that much. And with plastic bags, they can take up to hundreds of years to decompose in an area in the landfill that has no oxygen. So some of the recommendations for not only the industry, but for consumers to kind of push, um, push that demand is for the consumers to really start making better decisions. So when you go to the supermarket, when you're picking out mustard and ketchup, reach for the glass because glass can be reused over and over and over where that plastic uh, mustard jar can only be maybe reused two or three times and then the plastic c becomes unbearable and it's not being able to be reused. For industries, I think that the people up on the ninth floor or the 52nd floor where, who are making these decisions, they need to start thinking, how can we reduce our waste? And if they're reducing their waste and they're keeping the same price, they can actually improve their profits as a corporation. Absolutely, I agree. Now, <clears throat> you mentioned styrofoam, um, and I know that other municipalities um, make money from their white um, styrofoam, especially um, packaging um, foam that your TV would come in and other things. Is that something that you would try to implement for the town of Hanson? Um, at the recycling center if you could get the Board of Health on board and train that the transfer station had become a real recycling center? Right. Um, with that being said, uh, I think we have to look at it and see how many of these styrofoam processing plants are around. I know there's a local uh, guy in East Bridgewater, I believe, who's recycling styrofoam, but I'm not entirely sure on exactly the numbers and figures of is it really sending money back uh, just like um, light recycling was uh, you know 10 years ago 
Um, so that's something that we're going to have to look into. And absolutely, if there's any way that we can give more options up at the transfer station for recycling, uh, not only paper and plastic, but styrofoam, and if we have the room and it's in our capacity, I'd recommend it absolutely. And if it's not going to cost an arm and leg, it's a no-brainer. Right. It's always good when the town can make a little bit of money back. Um, and then we, the, the meeting, and the, there's trouble with not only China's not taking our recyclables and things like that anymore, but also the rising cost because folks are not cleaning and washing out their recyclables before bringing them to the transfer station. Um, I personally put a lot of my rec recyclables in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. They take up a little bit in running through. I'm using the same amount of water. But what do you do at home and what can you recommend to the viewers who might not have known that they need to wash their recyclables before right. um, bringing them in and the impacts to their talk tax dollars later on when we're being fined because of it. Right, and uh, for uh, the viewers at home that don't know what's going on is, you know, five, six years ago when, uh, when pay as you throw was implemented, the markets at that time said recycling is profitable, so we're not going to charge for any recycling. And all other products that need to go to the landfill we're going to charge for because it actually costs the town of Hanson money to get dispose of it as the recycling we are bringing in money. Now, as you said, China and other nations that are processing our waste, they're saying, no, we don't want your waste anymore and we're not going to take any recycling that is what they call soiled and that's going to ruin the batch. So that big container, so imagine when you drive up to the transfer station, you throw your recycling into the, uh, into the bin. If someone doesn't clean out their peanut butter jar, if someone doesn't do their fair share, everyone else's efforts is wasted because, you know, the recycling jar full of peanut, uh, the peanut butter bar jar that's soiled ruins the entire batch. They'll just say, yep, this whole batch we need to send back to the U.S. so they can put it in their landfills. So as you said, putting stuff in your recycling, uh, in your recycling, but putting your stuff in the dishwasher or just scrubbing it out uh, once in a while, using every bit of it um, really helps and goes a long way. Okay. Is there anything that cannot go into recycling that you're aware of at the transfer station? Because I know that if we accidentally put things in that it can be shipped back to us, and plastic bags really do a number on the recycling plants machines. Right, exactly. So, um, so that's one of the big things right now that's been a big push uh, throughout the Commonwealth is please don't throw your, uh, don't put your recycling in a plastic bag and then throw it in the recycling, because what happens is when the recycling uh, the bin full of recyclables goes to what they call MRF, a recycling center, the machines start to soar and they have all these gears and what happens are the plastic bags get caught up in the gears and they'll f actually end up having to shut down the machines every four hours and have men and women get in there literally with a knife and start cutting away and it's time consuming. So the more that, more that we have to shut down these machines, it's the more we're going to be paying as uh, consumers of the recycling. Other things that you don't want to throw in your recycling would be the styrofoam cups. I know on the bottom they say it has the re little recycling sign, but they don't belong in our transfer station recycling right now. And um, another good tr tip and trick is if you have a soda bottle with a cap or a water bottle with a cap, it's best to undo um, them and throw them in as two separate items. Cap over here, bottle over there. It can be in the same bin, but don't leave your cap on the bottle. That's a great point. Are there any other small, simple tips like that that would be helpful for the viewers to know? Um, yeah, I, w I would say for just get in the practice of saying, is this trash or is this uh, recyclable? And kind of just go, go on to mass.gov and go on to the uh, DEP website and kind of look at what is recyclable. My mom, she's great. I love her. 
she and she wants to make me proud, but she'll throw stuff that doesn't belong in the recycling. And she thought it was, and it's just because she didn't know what could and couldn't go in there. Yep. <coughs> now I know you speak to parents, and I, my, I love my parents. They're near and dear to me. I'm a little bit older now, um, but we had hard plastic recycling that last year could go to the transfer station. And this year we were told to cut it up, put it in orange bags. And what are the, if we're not going to have a real recycle and be able to take recyclables and we're going to promote to ultimately fill our la landfills and pla plastic's going to sit there forever, um, how would we improve? What can we do? Um, are there other places around that may be able to do, do that or things that we may not want anymore? Um, that someone else may be able to repair or make art or something out of it. Are there swap sheds or any things like that in the town of Hanson? Or um, there are a couple of shops that may be interested in taking that, um, but I think it's hard when you bring it to the transfer station. You have to, you know, some people are just trying to get rid of things, so you don't necessarily want to drop off something that is truly at its end of its useful life and right. cosmetic life. So, but if it's something that's lightly used, like a nice um, nice lamp or whatnot, there are places, there are drop-off centers throughout the South Shore that might want to take it, like Habitat for Humanity, uh, Salvation Army, um, and here in Hanson, there's a couple of other shops that might be interested in. Do you happen to know the name of the local shops here in Hanson? Um, I believe there is a shop right on 27, and it the name blanks, but it's in the old Ocean Spray building on the right-hand side as you go over the railroad tracks towards the police station. Um, but I don't know the name off the top of my head. Does the senior center still have their thrift shop? Do they take donations? Uh, that's, uh, that's a good question, and I'm not too sure if they do or not, um, as they've had a big influx of users over there. Okay, and we we apologize everybody for not knowing the exact names. Um, these things are just bouncing off um, by conversation, but it's something that you definitely want to go look into rather than trashing something um, to see if you can gift it or donate it um, to a secondhand shop. And even hop on Craigslist, and um, if you it, feel free to throw stuff up on Craigslist, put it under the free section, or even make a couple bucks. And um, the police station is always lit, and it's a safe area. So it, rather than having the person come to your house, you can just meet them at the Hanson Police Station in their parking lot and do a safe uh, transfer. That's a, another excellent idea. And I know a lot of people have gone away from Craigslist because of the dangers of it. Yep. Um, and, and then freecycle.com is another website where there's just stuff that people are trying to exchange, and it's just another outlet. That's excellent. Um, are there, I know there's always talk with um, Camp Kiwani and Cranberry Cove and with the season starting again. I know in past years they haven't had separate recycling bins versus trash. Um, and I was going to call Vice Chairman Zuko because it happens to be a neighbor. Um, and I forgot before the show um, to see if they'd had redeemables. At one and then a separate recycling and regular trash if that would be a burden to the to them and the highway department and those who assist with with the camp um, but and then also wondering about the funds and others of who's gonna cash in the recyclables and who would drop off the money and which right. account would it go to right uh, um, and that's and that's definitely something to look into for Camp Kiwani um, and the Recreation Commission, and I'm not going to really comment on their behalf, right. um, but it's something that they sh could be looked into, uh, but it's definitely an operational piece as well, and um, I think that the Commission as well as the staff would have to really look into it, but I agree. It's another great way to recycle, but also bring in some couple bucks here and there um, for the Cove. Now, a lot of a lot of different things are made, like comp composite decking and others, but it's a lot more expensive um, for the contractors to use in handyman. And then in the in the long run, there's not 
a lot of repair work to be done because it has a lifetime warranty. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever thought or discussed with anybody the possibility of not just doing the bands um, to help reduce in the carbon footprint, but to promote more materials in the world of building um, in art so we're using more of our waste um, in a positive way? Yeah, I haven't quite looked into that, um, that specific um, material and seeing what we could do on the municipal level. And I think, too, some people don't like it. You know, it, it seems to get a little bit hotter than the wood with the darker colors, you know, and it might just not meet their facade of the house. So um, that's, that's something that we could definitely recommend, or I'm sure carpenters and contractors could make those recommendations. But I think ultimately something like that um, would be kind of hard to push, especially with our New England homes where people like the cedar and the wo wooden decks, the natural wooden decks and stuff like that. I wouldn't disagree, and I asked because I saw an article um, with, and I forget the city, so I apologize, in the North Shore that wanted to force such things, and their thought was, well, we'll save the forest and we'll use up our rec recyclables. Yeah. Um, and then a few of the ar arguments from, from different departments were, well, I'm going to lose out on fees in the building department, and then the public was like, well, what if I can't afford that? I just need to replace one board. So. Right, right, and that and that's something to you know. I mean, uh, this is the first time I'm, I'm <laughs> hearing of such a of a push, you know. I mean, that's something to look into. But whereas wood is uh, is can be considered a natural and reusable resource, um, I I wouldn't really see the big push of saying sorry, you can't use, you know, cedar, you can't use. Uh, pine or anything like that because it it is a reusable resource and I know cutting down trees are in everyone's mind is a horrible thing but to have active forest management practices is actually really good for the forest to have a prescribed fire and burn down a forest at times is really great for the habitat and the ecosystems around it absolutely I agree and myself and I'm sure our viewers will be happy to know that at least down here, we won't have to worry that the possibility of being restricted to what we can use on our New England homes um, won't be at risk. Um, so we've talked a lot about the carbon footprint where the land landfills are full and we can ban certain things to reduce different things. Can you recommend any other simple ways at home where we could reduce our carbon footprint even more? Um, I know that the EPA data shows that um, if we just recycled one ton of office paper, that it'd be the equivalent of um, saving um, about 322 gallons of gasoline. Um, and just they say that just recycling 10 plastic bottles saves enough energy to power a laptop for more than 25 hours. Mm -hmm. So. Just one single can that you recycle, uh, one single Coke can or Pepsi can. If you recycle that, it's enough to power this TV sitting behind us for three hours. So every bit helps. But before we even get into what can we do for recycling and stuff like that, is ask ourselves, do I really need this? And not, uh, not buying into something that you're just going to have for you know, maybe a couple months, a couple years. But I really ask, do I need this? Do I really need to replace that just because I want something new? Uh, and then the next best step is efficiency, energy efficiency. I know right now we're kind of coming into the summer and people don't necessarily think of energy efficiency and they turn on their AC, but it's just like heating in the winter time. You want to seal up those cracks. You know, you want to make sure what you can do is actually uh, through um, Mass Save is you can actually have an energy audit. You can have people come to your homes for free. They'll walk, a wa walk around with a geothermal camera, and I believe we still have one at the Hanson Library that folks can just lend out. And you can actually scan your home, and you can kind of see where your air leaks are. 
because heating air is one of the most um, energy consumption things that we do is by heating the air, cooling the air. So by just making a more efficient home by doing that is good. Uh, with also with Mass Save, they'll come out and say, hey, you're using incan incandescent light bulbs. You should start using LEDs, and they're going to use less energy. Um, and maybe purchasing in, on your next big purchase for a washing machine or a television or even a uh, oil uh, or a heating system, look at it and see if it is a Energy Star approved appliance. And just by doing those little things, that's all low-hanging fruit, it can help really um, save the planet. And one of the thing, things I do for work is I'm a community and urban forester. And just by planting a tree on someone's property that's going to cast shade on their house can help reduce their energy costs uh, year after year. And the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. And the second best time is today. So just by doing those little things at home, plant a tree, uh, energy efficiency, calling out Mass Save to come out and kind of do an audit can help you uh, big time, not only us, but the planet. And then, and no, um, and those are, that's great advice. Um, what type of toxins are we potentially ingesting secondhand from our styrofoam and our plastics um, and other things that we are using on a daily basis. Sure. Um, so I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of XYZ, but with uh, there's been studies show, have shown uh, there's carcinogenics. And for people that don't know what a carcinogenic is, it's the chemicals that can um, give you cancer. So uh, there's been studies that show that styrofoam by putting it in the microwave, you know, we all heard, don't, don't microwave the uh, styrofoam because it's going to leach things into your food. Well, I'm sure with hot, hot boiling water in that styrofoam, it's going to leach out some chemicals. And same with any plastic bottles or anything like that. Um, and there are um, companies that are, are out there, just like 23andMe, who will... Uh, you can send in a hair sample or a swab of your mouth, and they'll tell you, hey, you have a high level of toxins in your body, and then they'll help you try to reduce those toxins in your house. Um, and, you know, of course, it costs money because it's a uh, company and lab fees and whatnot. But th there are options out there for people that are really interested to see what chemicals they're breathing air in from car exhausts or from the street or consuming through styrofoam, there's, night, there's home kits that you can uh, buy and see what is in your house, what's in your body, and what you can do to help um, um, get rid of them. That's very good advice. And then lit is not only just uh, ugly, and reducing our carbon footprints, not only just important for the, envi the environment, but it has a big effect on public health too. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to protect the public health side of it, um, whether it be the where we store our recyclables? And we now understand the importance of washing it. Um, so we, if we have clean recyclables, we shouldn't bring, bring, bring in animals to um, our recyclable barrels, hopefully. Um, that. Um, you can suggest for us. So, uh, so you, you wanted to know more about uh, the public health side, side of, of recycling. It. Yes. So, absolutely, um, it's it's a win-win-win. The more we recycle, it's better for our environment, but it's also better for our health. And um, by recycling, we're not having to frack uh, the uh, the eastern coast for the natural gas to make those plastic bags. If you watch certain documentaries, they'll show you by fracking, which is drilling for natural gas, it actually can contaminate uh, well water. And people's water, that you can turn on the spigot, you can actually light their water on fire because it's full of that natural gas. And by um, recycling, we're not going to have to dip into these reserves as much. And by not having to dip into the reserves as much, 
we're not exposing ourselves to all these threats, um, uh, these chemical threats. And then think of it too. Now our recycling gets shipped over to China and they're trying to bring more sorting plants here in the U.S. But think of it this way. The less that these, tr these tr uh, recycling trucks or boats have to travel to across the ocean and then get rejected and then travel back and then do something with it here in the U.S., that's the less emissions that we're spending on a batch of recycling. And that's less emissions that we're breathing in. That is excellent. Um, we're out of time, um, <clears throat> almost, but um, other than reusable cups, mess kits for outings or camping, um, and your reusable bags and your little fruit and vegetable bags that you can bring into stores, um, is there anything else that you can recommend um, to the home to the viewers and consumers where we're not going out and doing um, the society of convenience and that just one time use and toss? Sure, so you're looking for other products other than the reusable bags and whatnot. What I always say is bring your kids. Instead of having to get a bag, you know, if you forget your bags, well, that's okay. Bring your kid. You carry this item. It was funny. Growing up, my dad would always try to stack things up. And, you know, we're not using a carriage today, Matt. You just, here, hold this, will you? Hold this. And here I am trying to juggle everything. So have fun with your kids. Bring your kids to the store. Have them carry your uh, groceries around. I'm guilty of that. Someone usually ends up getting me a carriage. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I greatly appreciate having you on the show. Um, I've learned a lot. And I hope for you is that you'll take the last two shows and really try to implement um, the suggestions that have come. Um, I'm sure that Mr. Dyer wouldn't mind having you um, at the selectmen's meetings, um, especially the joint ones with the Board of Health. Um, or send Mr. McHugh an email if you have ideas um, so that we can keep a healthy environment for our children and our grandchildren um, and our great-grandchildren and that also so we can become healthier. Um, thank you for watching and have a great week.